It's Morse code time, picking up where we left off last week. The meteorologist Jacob Morse is here to give us the inside scoop on the National Weather Service. Yeah, so last week we talked about the Storm Prediction Center, and they're located in Norman, Oklahoma. They issue the severe thunderstorm watches as well as the convective outlooks for several days into the future, forecasting where in the country might see severe storms. Now we're going to take it to the local level. Each uh, county has assigned to a National Weather Service office. It's divvied up across the country based on geography. The Weather Service office responsible for 36 counties in western and central North Dakota is located in Bismarck near the airport. So that Weather Service office needs to have staffing for quiet weather days. And normally there's just two people or two meteorologists there, a forecaster and someone that's worried about social media and taking official observations. But when there's severe weather that's forecast, or a severe weather event that's taking place, it gets a lot more crowded in the National Weather Service office in Bismarck. They can have as many as 8 to 11 meteorologists with a variety of different roles. And I'm going to send it over to Zachary Hargrove at the Weather Service to explain all the different responsibilities of these roles. On a quiet weather day, we usually just have two people working here. We have one person doing the forecast and one person monitoring social media, uh, taking observations, looking at all the data, making sure that's good. Uh, then it gets quite a bit different when we have severe weather. It gets a lot more exciting. Uh, this place is a lot more full. So let's just talk about a really busy severe weather, weather day. We can have upwards of say 8 to 11 meteorologists here on the floor. We'll have uh, an event coordinator who's kind of making sure everybody's doing okay, everybody's not too tired, and, and just kind of keeping a, an eye on the big picture. We'll have two to three radar teams depending on how big the event is, how widespread it is. So a radar team consists of two people. You'll usually have one person drawing the polygons, uh, really analyzing the rotation if we're looking at a, a, a tornado threat and just looking at, at a, a number of different things for hail and wind. And then we'll have another person who's looking maybe more in depth at some of the dual polarization data, some of the more advanced data, uh, some more of the mesoanalysis and environmental uh, aspects. Um, a lot of times we'll have a mesoanalyst too, a dedicated mesoanalyst, who will be keeping those other radar team members up to date with some of the, the environmental uh, parameters to, to say, hey, you need to focus on the tornado threat, hey, you need to focus on the giant hail threat. Um, so that, that is uh, really helpful to the uh, radar operators. A lot of times we'll have a person monitoring social media, We'll have somebody who's in charge of communication, so that, that person will make sure if we get, say, a tornado report that, that, that the, the appropriate people know, um, that the radar operators will know and they can forward phone calls to them so they can actually look at what they're, uh, look at the radar or what the person's reporting. One of the roles that Zachary mentioned was the mesoanalyst. Let's expand on that a little bit. That's looking at the environment, seeing if there's enough instability for severe storms to fire up. That's called CAPE. And there's a bunch of different model viewers that the meteorologists look at to see exactly where that instability might be maximized, where there might be the most shear in the atmosphere that might lead to a more of a tornado threat or more of a hail threat. And uh, there's a bunch of different composite indices, too, that these mesoanalysts have to look at. And then those are communicated to the radar teams so that they have the best information possible for issuing those warnings. Uh, now let's focus on the social media aspect and how that's changed over time. Social media has become a much bigger uh, form of communication for us over the last, oh, I'd say, five to seven years. Uh, I know that when I first got here, we would, it was, it was a thing, but we weren't, really strategizing on on how to how to you know having one person dedicated to answering questions or posting and now we kind of have that streamline to where we have a, a method we have somebody dedicated to that or maybe when I got here we didn't always have that so the meteorologists need to be ready to come into the office when severe weather strikes Zachary is now going to talk about how much of a lead time and how they prepare for getting more people into the office a lot of times we'll notice these bigger events coming, you know, two or three days in advance and we'll start getting an idea, we'll start looking at the schedule, who might be available to come in, um, who is actually working, who's certified to work radar, all that, that kind of, those kind of aspects. Uh, but 
a lot of times when we actually make the decision to get the extra people in will be when SPC, the Storm Prediction Center, is contemplating some kind of severe watch, whether that's severe thunderstorm or tornado watch. Uh, when we get the impression that that's coming, we'll start planning and getting some people in. So that's the ideal scenario when you have some lead time knowing that a severe weather outbreak is going to be coming a couple days in advance. Then when those watches get issued, we can, they can bring in a lot more people to the office. But what happens when you can get a couple of severe thunderstorms that pop up somewhat unexpectedly? The first priority is getting any kind of alert or warning out if it's needed. Uh, you know, that, that's our first priority. A lot of times, depending on how widespread the event is, then we'll start calling some people in. Once the products are out, once we feel like everything's warm, the public is, is aware, then we'll go ahead and try to get a couple of extra people in. Usually, we can get people here within 15 to 30 minutes. So there's a lot of different roles that the meteorologists have during a severe weather event at the National Weather Service, a lot of teamwork and communication, but what's Zachary's favorite role to have during a severe weather event? I like working radar, that's kind of my thing. I love severe, working severe convection, uh, and so I like working radar, but over the, the past few years, I've really gotten to where I like doing the event coordinating too, because I enjoy the, the kind of the overview and seeing all the moving parts working together, and it, it just gets me moving around the operations floor, so I, I really enjoy that as well. So it's kind of cool being able to go behind the scenes there, see the inner workings of the National Weather Service. So we have the end product of getting the warnings on our phones and on TV, but there's a lot that goes into it. A lot of people behind the scenes working together collaboratively to get the proper information out to the public. And they have high resolution radar data straight from the radar there on site coming in with up to the minute scans to disseminate those warnings. Looking at all those different responsibilities, mm -hmm. two meteorologists here, what would you pick in a severe weather situation? What would you want to be doing? Well, Zach already got the good one. This, yeah. this is the radar. <laughs> the radar, that's, that's the best <laughs> that's one, huh? Exact. Yeah, and I also like how, Jacob, how you all mentioned how um, the Storm Prediction Center um, puts out their advisories and then it's broken down to a more local level. That's kind of what happened yesterday because Storm Prediction Center kind of had Bismarck including the area, but the National Weather Service office in Bismarck had their data and did not include them because there was little to no severe weather threat for Burley. Yeah, so it's even collaborative from the national level at the Storm mm -hmm. Prediction Center down mm -hmm. to the office here in Bismarck. Good Absolutely. stuff. Thank you, Jacob. You're welcome.